The book of John is a piece, a, a mighty piece. And in the book of John, you are going to find 18 manifestations of Jesus' divinity, even though he was trapped in a human encasement. That's what you'll find in the book of John. The book of John happens to be the book of life. It is a book that captures the manifestation and the display of the life of God as was present in the life of Jesus Christ. So he manifested his divinity irrespective of the fact that his new encasement that was the requirement for him to satisfy the claims of divine justice was a human body. He brought about an advertisement of his father. He was a theater that manifested the dimensions of his father. Are you still with me? The second aspect of the ministry of the Christ is what happened after his resurrection. Uh, the, 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 the significance of the resurrection is a word called inclusion. Because when Jesus was on the cross, are you still with me? All right, you are not with me. Now listen, this is my pen. And this is my diary, okay? If I put this pen in this diary, and I travel with this diary to Kumasi, where would the pen be? Good. By an act of God's authority, God decided to include us in Christ when he was on the cross. So when Christ died, you died. When Christ was buried, you were buried. When Christ was raised from the dead, you were raised from the dead. When Christ ascended into the heavens and sat down at the right hand of God, you also are seated with him according to the scriptures in the same seat that he sits because you have become a joint heir with him in the enterprise of the administration of the purposes of God. In the inclusion, you are part with him. Are you there? And that has become a possibility because you are a partaker of the Holy Ghost. And what the Holy Ghost comes to do in your vessel, Jesus said it in the book of John chapter 14, John chapter 16. Uh, Jesus said that the Holy Spirit, when he shows up, uh, I see a signal, a wrong signal. Just in case you came here to test power, you repent. Because I've seen your signal. If you shoot it again, I will strike you. Okay? Now, um, Jesus, the moment he was raised from the dead, something happened. You will notice that it was in that resurrected state that he visited the disciples in the book of John chapter 20, verse 20 to 22. And he said to them, as the Father has sent me, so send I you. And that was the scripture that gave us the privilege to understand how Jesus was sent from heaven. Before Jesus departed heaven to come into the earth as a major actor in the Godhead to bring to pass the agenda of God, there was a ceremony in heaven. And in that ceremony, the high point of the ceremony was that the Father came and breathed upon Jesus and said unto Jesus, Receive ye the Spirit. It means that the Father was transferred into Jesus as the Spirit. So you'll find Jesus, are you with me? You'll find Jesus always saying that he cannot do anything of himself. It's only that which his father is doing that he does. Are you with me? Because his duty in his human living was to live out the father. So the father gives him signs of the things that he's doing inside of him. And then he leaves him out. So Jesus was the theater of his father. He was one with his father by the spirit. Are you, are you still with me? A time came when Thomas became intelligent and Thomas asked Jesus, I said, show us the father. You've been talking about the father every day. Won't you be kind enough to show us the father? At least for once. And Jesus almost had a heart attack. He said, so, my God. There was no moment in my human living that I put myself on display. 
I put my own personal desires in captivity so that I can manifest the desires of the Father. So the person you have been interfacing with all this while, in my responses, in my choices, in my preferences, was actually the Father that resides within me. And the same possibility found expression in resurrection. We became one with the Christ. Hallelujah. That's inclusion. And anything, any resource that was available to Jesus on the strength of that oneness, because he has breathed on us now, say, receive ye the Holy Ghost. So he has breathed himself into us as what? The Holy Spirit. You know, in his own case, it was the Father that was released into him as the Spirit. But in our own case, it is him that is released into us as the Spirit. So as we are, are you there? It means that Christ is locked up in the Holy Ghost. As we relate with the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost doesn't put himself on display. It just creates a channel for us to be able to interface with Jesus. So that we'll have the opportunity to live out his desires just as he lived out the Father's desires in the time of his human living. Do you understand that? That's the season of the inclusion. So we are one with him because the Bible reveals that he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit with him. So there is, that's the inclusion. So we have access to every resource that Jesus had while he walked this world. So it is expected that your life will produce the same kind of results that Jesus was able to reproduce in the face of inflation, in the face of hardship, in the face of trouble, in the face of demons, in the face of Satan. Please help me preach to your neighbor quickly. You are supposed to produce the same results. Once upon a time, they came to Jesus and said to him, you know, we've been watching you and we realize that you don't pay temple tax. According to the laws of those days, if you were Jewish, you were relieved from paying temple tax. Temple tax payment was only the duty of proselytes, people that were converts to Judaism and Jesus could have said hey do you realize that I'm a Jew I'm from Bethlehem he would have claimed his right but he decided not to claim his right he just said oh, Peter I still remember you were a fisherman you still remember your skills all right you need to go back to the water side and take your hook and I was amazed that even though Peter was in ministry he kept his hook <laughs> in, in a place that he can locate it Now, so Peter reached out and took his hook and he went to the riverside. And when he went to the riverside, Jesus told him that you are going to find a fish that has a gold coin in his mouth. Are you there? You find what? A fish that has what? Have you ever tried putting a, a coin in your mouth before? You will need to keep your mouth. I have done that when I was a little child. You will need to keep your mouth closed in order to keep your, the coin in your mouth. All right? So the fish also had to keep the mouth closed in order for the coin to remain in his mouth and it was a hook that peter was going to use to get the fish have you ever okay okay you guys are elitist people you have never tried your hands on fishing because the fish's mouth needs to be open before you can catch it it must be looking for some of the food that you have on your hook and it needs to open his mouth to access that food on your hook before your hook can catch one side of his mouth but his mouth is closed because the coin is in his mouth so someone needs to explain to me how that man succeeded in getting that fish i, I don't oh my i think a lot i think a lot I think, how did you you know why it was possible because the instruction came from jesus and the same capacity with which jesus was able to achieve that mighty impossible feat is in your life right now and so if your life is not producing the same results at the same frequency then we need to admit you to the intensive care unit of the grace of god for for examination so the second level of the ministry of christ is the inclusion where we are one with him and because of our oneness with him by the spirit that's the reason for which the bible calls us joint hairs together with christ you understand that so we cannot be separated from him we are that's what we call common union it's the kind of arrangement that takes place when you use uh, a yoke of oxen a yoke of oxen the yoke of oxen establishes common union you see two independent oxes 
are brought together through the instrument called what the yoke and it binds them together and even though they want to go in different directions because of the yoke they are bound together oh you're not with me oh yeah. ah, because you are not is it yeah, yeah. you're not following <laughs> hallelujah now listen we'll try one more time if you're not here again then we'll just i, I always to in ghana i come with my pen when i notice we just we'll cancel something out right here the yoke of oxen binds to oxen together so that they will have a common union because of that their 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 cumulative strength can be transmitted to the yoke so it can perform agricultural services as they work together they have a desire to go in different directions in search of pasture they are hungry but as long as they are fasting to the yoke they have a common destiny a common direction that's what we call common union See, we are yoked with Christ by the Spirit. Are you there? If you are yielded to the yoke, and the yoke in this case happens to be the Holy Ghost. If you are yielded to the yoke, you'll be going in the direction that Jesus is going. You see, you may not like it, but you are yielded. So You will just find yourself. It's, it's easier for you to glide with God than for you to glide in the flesh. And that's why the Bible calls the, the activities of the flesh walks. It takes walk. For you to flow in the flesh walk it takes you need oh jesus you need to pray about that iniquity before you perform it because your conscience your your oh my god everything is rejecting it but you see if you decide to yield to the holy ghost you will find yourself flowing in the direction of christ because you are yoked with him by the holy spirit that's the second aspect of the ministry of christ our yoking by the holy spirit so that you are no longer alone his resources available to you he is closer to you than anybody sitting by your side and if you can decide to befriend him your relationship with him will gain more mileage than the relationship you have with your wife in one year so just in case you don't know his voice you cannot decode his frequency it's not because he is far away it is because you have ignored him you have not taken time to begin to build relationship with him now i have one topic here which is pursuing intimacy with god that's supposed to be the last topic but we have we had three sessions and that's why i'm here right now you see the idea of intimacy with god is on the strength of that yoke. are you there now that are you still with me yes. that yoke is the mystical union that we have with christ that is illustrated by physical natural marriage that yoke is a real intercourse it's a real union that exists in the spirit and it is on the strength of that union in fact in fact uh, this our own union in the natural is supposed to be a platform uh, that provides a possibility of the expression of that mystical union that we have with christ this platform should manifest what riches are factored in that mystical union it is on the strength of this that the bible reveals that we should not be unequally yoked with what unbelievable now what that means is if you take a an ox that is not you see the two oxen that will be under the influence of the yoke must be the same height and the same strength if you if you if you make an arrangement of unequal yoking the ox that has that is stronger and taller than the other one will be the reason for which the other one will die are you still with me? And it happens to be that uh, when you're equally yoked, no, I don't want to go there, I don't want to explain, but two of them cannot survive. Eh? One will influence the other and make it like it. Right? So we, that's the reason for which you are not allowed to marry an unbeliever. Because that unbeliever doesn't have any connection with the crystals. In the, in the, real context of union and marriage he doesn't feature in that framework and there is no possibility therefore are you there <coughs> you're not with me have you read the scripture that says and the two shall become one the reason why they shall become one that's their destiny all right the reason why they shall become one is because they are uniquely one in christ jesus so their connection in the natural has a destiny of oneness in view following me uh, so so um 
If by any means the other person is an unbeliever, the possibility of oneness is not in view. Because they are not unique, they one. So the issue of inclusion is critical. The reason for God's expectation on your life in various matters is connected to the fact that you are in union with Christ Jesus. And this became our status on the account of his resurrection. But in the book of Revelation that I just consulted right now, there is the ministry of Christ enters into the third gear. Because the situation of the church mm, Hallelujah. I will need to do a lot of Bible study to bring you to understand what I want to say. First thing I need to, you to know is that uh, God in the book of Revelation decides to isolate an apostle. Apostle John. Apostle John was Jesus' best human friend during the days of his flesh. You stay with me? All right. So, um, John was the brother of James. And surprisingly, because their mother was quite an influential woman, they spoke to their mother to come help convince Jesus to secure their position in the kingdom that uh, belonged to him. So the mother came to Jesus and said, um, can you grant that one of my sons will sit on your left side? Grant that another son will sit on what? My right side? In this your kingdom you have been talking about. So Jesus now said, are you, can this your children drink of my cup? Can they partake in my baptism? The woman said, you are not aware of my children. <laughs> I know my children. The stuff that you have made up. This woman would have gone home to think about that question. She just, she, she implicated those young boys. She never knew that the baptism Jesus was talking about was the baptism of death. She never knew that the cup he was talking about was the cup of suffering. And when the chapters of persecution opened over the church, the first, guess who was the first victim of persecution? It was James because of the application. So, are you there? Jesus said, okay, because they are ready to be partakers of my baptism and my cup, I have included them in my baptism and in my cup. I have the authority to include them. But the one that will determine who will sit here or there is not me. So I forwarded their file for onward administrative When the file came back, it came back in the death of James. <laughs> so we, we now know that the only option that is left is the cup of suffering and that was what John had to bear. He was the only apostle that was left as at the time he was banished to the Isle of Patmos. He was a menace. If you put John anywhere, he will preach. And even if he, 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 followers of Satan will be converted. He had so much influence that he became a plague to the political system of that time. And they felt the only way to deal with this man was to kill him. Historical perspective captures that a mild stone was tied around his neck and he was thrown into the open sea. John became a living creature in the sea, a water creature, for three days. He was, he was put in boiling oil. He still survived. So they banished him to the Isle of Patmos. In the Isle of Patmos, he had an encounter with Jesus. And if you understand the framework of the book of uh, Revelation, you will see that Jesus came to John with a fresh introduction of himself. Because the revelation that John had about Jesus was time-based. Jesus of Nazareth. It was a time-based revelation. It was on the Isle of Patmos that Jesus decided to unveil his true manifestation, consistent with his eternal designation as the priest after the order of Melchizedek. The reason why I know that it is priesthood appearance that Jesus sustains in the book of Revelation chapter 1 is because of his belt. He had a golden belt here on the chest. Meanwhile, the Levitical priests have what is called a curious ghetto, which is a rope on the waist. That's the last feature, the last item that the priest needs to put on before he begins sacrifice, the curious ghetto. In the case of Jesus, it was not a curious ghetto that was there. It was a golden band on his chest, indicative of the fact that there was no 
more need for sacrifice in the priesthood after the order of Melchizedek. Are you still with me? I think I need to press you a bit further. Just press you a bit further. Uh, shall we go further? Because, you know, I don't, I'm not aware of your... your um whenever because these days people want to be scholarly around the scriptures without discipleship and training and they think that biblical understanding is intellectual not spiritual uh, it will interest you to know that when you say old testament old testament first of all there are two pivots from whence we can interpret the bible we can interpret the bible from the first pivot as a book of the kingdom Secondly, we can interpret the Bible as a book of covenants. And in the, in the Bible, there are five covenants. And only one is old. Only one is old. Listen to me. Only what? One is old. 